Hello. The discussions about Jesus Christ lasted in the church for quite a long time, at least five centuries, from the third through the eighth, or maybe ninth, uh, or even further centuries. So it's really difficult to uh, summarize those discussions in 10 minutes, but let me try. Um, I'd, I'd boil down those discussions to the dialectical pair of uh, oneness and plurality in God. Uh, the differentiation between oneness and plurality is familiar to us and we apply it um, in, in different spheres of our life. Uh, so it, 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 it is also applicable to God. Um, Christianity uh, started as a monotheistic religion and always emphasized that God is one, the oneness of God. Uh, it was very important for Christianity and it is still important. Uh, Christianity uh, inherited uh, the idea of one God monotheism from, from the Jewish religion. That's why uh, monotheism constitutes the basis of uh, what we call Judeo-Christianity, Judeo-Christian tradition. And uh, at that time, unlike uh, today, at the time when Christianity emerged, monotheism, the belief in one God, uh, constituted a minority. Uh, only a minority believed in one God and the majority believed in many gods. So Christianity really had to struggle to prove that God is one. That's why oneness, the oneness of God uh, became an, a very important feature of, of the Christian theology. At the same time, the Christian theologians, theologians uh, uh, understood and realized that uh, uh, God is not one in the same sense and as he is uh, for, uh, for, for the Jewish religion because God has become incarnated. And uh, we've seen uh, God through Jesus Christ. So they try to resolve the, uh, the, the, the issue, how the oneness of God can be combined with, uh, with the presence of Jesus among, among us. Uh, in other words, how uh, uh, the oneness of God is compatible with the plurality uh, in God that the, the Christians uh, believed in because they believe in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is God. Uh, also, uh, the Holy Spirit uh, adds to this plurality of God. Therefore, from the early centuries, um, uh, speaking about God uh, meant resolving the issue, the balance between the oneness and plurality in God. And different theological schools gave different answers uh, to, um, uh, to, uh, to this issue. Uh, eventually, uh, they uh, arrived at a synthesis uh, that God is both one and plural, or more precisely, three. Uh, they arrived at the concept of triunity of God, that God is tri uh, tri uh, triune. Um, he is one and three simultaneously. Uh, what, what helped them to uh, arrive at this conclusion is the... Uh, philosophical logics that they adopted, Christian theologians adopted from the pagan philosophy, particularly from Aristotle and his commentators, such as Porphyry. Um, and one of the helpful distinctions in the ancient uh, pagan logics was the one between uh, communality, commonality and particularity. Uh, this distinction applies to again to the variety of things around us. Like we can talk about a tree and uh, uh, a forest, uh, which is a sum of trees, or the nature of trees, the common nature of trees, the treeness, as, as it were. Um, the same can be said about a human being, a particular human being, John, Peter, uh, Sarah, and so forth, and humanity, the human nature. So they applied, the Christian theolo theologians applied this uh, a differentiation, distinction between the commonality and plurality or a particularity uh, to God. And they explain God as one commonality, the divine essence, and three uh, particularities, uh, which they called uh, uh, persons or hypostasis, a Greek word uh, meaning a particular, a concrete, a real being. Um, so the, the answer to the question uh, to the issue of oneness and plurality was the following. The uh, divine oneness, God's oneness, is secured by the common nature, common essence of God. God is one essence, and that's why he is one. Uh, 
Uh, at the same time, God is three persons, and this constitutes this plural uh, aspect of the divine being. Uh, Christ, it took a long time and a lot of effort to arrive at this conclusion, um, and this conclusion also helped to understand another uh, difficult issue for the Christian theologians in the early centuries, how the oneness and plurality are combined in Jesus Christ, because Jesus Christ, uh, Christ features the same kind of uh, dilemma. He is one and he is plural at the same time, and it is vital for Jesus Christ to be both one and plural. It is also vital for our salvation, uh, why he is so. Um, in which sense, so Jesus Christ is one, and in which sense he is plural. Um, it also took a lot, a lot of time for the theologians to arrive at this, um, at, at, at this, uh, at answering the, this question. Um, there were theologians who emphasized the plurality in Jesus Christ, like that he is a God and a man, he is divine and human, uh, they really stress this aspect of Jesus Christ, sometimes quite extremely, as in the case of the so-called Nestorianism, uh, which um, uh, suggested that Jesus Christ is uh, a, just appears to be one, but in reality he is double, and uh, under the appearance of a common appearance of Jesus Christ, there are two very different realities, autonomous realities of uh, the divinity and humanity. Uh, this, this idea of plurality in Jesus Christ was rejected by the Church, uh, by the Catholic Church, and uh, uh, instead, um, the person who was behind this rejection, uh, the Archbishop of Alexandria, Cyril, uh, insisted that Jesus Christ is one, and uh, um, uh, he stressed the oneness of Jesus Christ, and he uh, try to elaborate a formula of unity. I should say uh, one word, uh, a couple of words about unity. Unity is not the same as oneness. Unity is the combination, is the synthesis between the oneness and plurality. Together, the oneness and plurality constitute unity. So, uh, Cyril of Alexandria elaborated on the formula of unity in Jesus Christ and suggested a formula which, which was accepted by the Church. Uh, he stressed the unity in Jesus Christ. Some of his followers overstressed this unity and reached some kind of marginal ideas, uh, like uh, in the case of uh, um, a Constantinopolitan monk, Eutychus, who uh, suggested that the humanity of Jesus Christ uh, became a divinity, was absorbed to divinity, and actually turned to divinity. Uh, he's a, he thus diminished the, the plurality in Jesus Christ. Uh, to a very dangerous, uh, minimalistic degree uh, and uh, overstressed the oneness in Jesus Christ. So his formula of unity was false <clears throat> and uh, it was discussed at the Council of Chalcedon, which, which happened in uh, 451, and it was a crucial council which uh, arrived at an, uh, an acceptable formula of Christ's unity, which combines uh, in good proportions, healthy proportions, the oneness and plurality in Jesus Christ. Uh, this formula states that uh, Jesus Christ is one in the sense that uh, he is one person, and uh, he is plural in the sense that he consists of the divine and human natures. The Council of Chalcedon thus uh, employed the same distinction between, remember, uh, commonality and particularity, which was employed uh, by the fathers of the church earlier when they answered the question uh, how God is one and plural simultaneously. Uh, remember, that answer, answer was that God is one in the sense of one essence, common essence, and he's plural in the sense of three particular persons. Uh, so the fathers later on in the fifth century reversed this logic and they, then said, they said that Jesus Christ is one as a particular being. The particularity uh, of Jesus is single, is singular. Uh, that's why he's one hypostasis. However, his uh, uh, commonalities, which are divine and human, 
they constitute the plurality in Jesus Christ, and they come together, they are combined in, in the one being of Jesus Christ. That's why, well, uh, the commonality and particularity, these categories, uh, became helpful to answering the question uh, uh, how uh, Jesus Christ can be one and plural simultaneous. He is one in the sense of a particularity as a particular human being, divine human being, and he is um, a plural in the sense of being divine and being human and sharing divinity with his father and sharing humanity uh, with us. So that is basically the formula of a unity in Jesus Christ that uh, it took a long, uh, a long of time for the church to arrive at this formula and we take it for granted. Nevertheless, it's uh, helpful to understand this formula and helpful to, uh, to look at Jesus uh, from, uh, from this perspective.